or do you think that um, just the diagnosis needs to be taken for their Well, my first, my personal opinion is that it's being more diagnosed because recently um, autism has been put into city schools as an actual disability, so now people are more, more known about it. And the idea that if it actually autism is increasing is something I do sort of believe because in general, when talking to my mentor, we were discussing how in his generation, children didn't seem to be too autistic, but now there's many more children that seem to be autistic. If, I'm not sure whether it's parents are letting their autistic children go outside now, or if it's that there are more autistic children, but referring back to the uh, presentation about the growth hormones and things, I'm thinking that autism might actually be growing now. Any other questions? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so you think that then the kids who have an increase in cases or things in their marriage should um, get, be given an ultimate formula? Oh, what do you mean as in formula? Like not, not be given an ultimate or I, I, I do believe that because um, I was talking yeah. with, yeah, a different formula because I was talking with a few parents and I read some research that basically when parents do take their children off of milk, they actually behave better. For example, there was one child who was autistic who would basically not be able to pick up his head and roll on the floor. When his mother took him off of milk, a few weeks later he was able to pick up his head, but when he goes back to milk, he regresses. And how many of those kids have been um, diagnosed with a possible milk allergy? Well, they've been, well, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, I can definitely check this out. Um, there have been other children I worked with that we are we currently do know that they do not have any milk allergies, but the milk still does affect their autism. And I believe because it has a heroin-like effect, that might be why autism is either worse or not. Yeah. Any other questions? Can you go back to the conclusion? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Anything else? All right, um, well, I was looking at different genes. Um, there was Shank 3 and others. Um, I'm more than eager to go back as soon as whoever knew this is done. Just saying when you're done, so I can go back. Um, yes, questions? Yes. Um, so, you in your discussions with your mentor, has there been much of a conclusive uh, leading to other additives in food and autism? Wait, I didn't understand that. Um, let's say, when you're talking about growth hormones, mm -hmm. right? What about possibly other food additives and that's that, that may be contributing to, uh, a, let's say, greater occurrence of autism? Is there any link there? Um, uh, so far, I have looked into others. There are other foods that do also contribute. For example, soy is one. Um, some certain wheats is another, basically, so we were discussing that and there are other things and so far after this I'm looking forward into trying to see if I can find specific genes in milk and soy and see if they're similar to autism genes, so by using fossil W I'll be able to see that. What about pesticides? Um, pesticides is another one I was looking at. But with other children I discussed with, their parents are all organic, and some of the parents actually make their own food and grow it. So pesticides is possible, but not necessarily directly linked. Anyone else? Or can I move back to the uh, last slide? I guess so. So, okay. So back to your question about which genes I was blasting. I blasted Shank 3, um, CMTNAP2, which I think they can't nap to. Uh, NLGN4X and NRXN1. Now there are other genes. So far when I've done my research, I've had 21 and 25 genes that are either linked to autism or can actually to it, which is, I didn't really want to make too many slides. Any other questions or, yes? Hypothesis? Okay, hypothesis for you. 